And here we have to end our beautiful evening, Kelly Russell. And I don't know what he's going to do. It's going to be a surprise. And now I'm opening the chat. So if you'd like to leave a message or two for your appreciation of the evening that we have in words, what you have felt, we'd really appreciate it. So if you could put a little message in the chat, that would be lovely. And all the while, Kelly will be entertaining us. Come in, Kelly. Thank you. Um, I'm going to do a recitation. This was written by my father, Ted Russell. Um, the Newfoundlanders on board here will uh, certainly recognize this and know it. Uh, but I'd like uh, uh, the Irish folks here to be able to hear this wonderful recitation. Um, it's become a classic here in Newfoundland. Uh, everyone over here knows it. It's called The Smoke Room on the Kyle. And here to transport us to Pigeon Inlet is the concertina. Fishermen tell when summer's work is done, of fish they caught, of birds they shot, of crazy risks they run. But never did a fisherman tell a tale so tall by half a mile as Grandpa Walcott told one night in the smoke room on the Kyle. With backy smoke from twenty pipes, the atmosphere was blue. It was many a have another boy, and uh, ooh, I don't mind if I do. When somebody suggested that each in turn should spin a yarn about some circumstance he'd personally been in. Well, then tales were told of gun barrels bent to shoot around the cliff, of men thawed out and brought to life that had been frozen stiff, of bark pots carried off by flies, of pathways chopped through fog, of woodsman bill, who, barefoot, Kick the knots out of a 12-inch log. The loud applause grew louder when Uncle Mickey Shea told it a big potato he grew in Gander Bay. It was too big to fit through the cellar door, so it lay at rest nearby until one rainy night that fall, the pig drowned in its eye. But meanwhile, in a corner, his gray head slightly bowed, sat Grandpa Walcott, 84, the oldest of the crowd. Upon his weather-beaten face, there beamed a quiet grin. When someone shouted, Grandpa, it is your turn to chip in. Oh, no, boys, uh, leave me out, said Grandpa. Oh, oh, thanks. Don't mind if I do. Well, all right, boys. If you insist, I'll tell you one that's true. Tis a story about jigging squid that I'm going to relate. It happened in Pigeon Inlet in 1888. Now, uh, me, I was just a bedlammer then fishing with me dad. And prospects for the season were looking pretty bad. The Cape Bloom skull was over and it hadn't been too bright. And now here was August come and gone, and there a squid in sight. Well, day after day, we searched for squid till dark from the crack of dawn, dug up clams and cocks and hens till even these were gone, and still no squid. So in despair, we give it up for good, took our gear ashore and went cutting firewood. Now, so one morning while out in the woods with all the other men, and wondering if we'd ever see another squid again. Father broke his axe that day, so we were the first ones out. And as we neared the land wash, we heard the women shout, Come hurry, boys! The squids are in! So we jumped aboard our boat and started out the harbor, the only crew afloat. But soon our keel began to scrunch, like scraping over skids. Father said I, We've run aground. Me son said he, that's squids. Said he, the jigger, heave it out so quick as a flash I did, and soon as it struck the water, it was grappled by a squid. So I hauled it in. 
And what do you think? As soon as it crossed the rail, well, I'll be darned. If there wasn't, a second squid clung on to the first one's tail. And another one clung to that one, and so on in a string. I tried to shake him loose, but father said, you foolish thing, you got something was never seen before in Newfoundland. Drop the jigger, boy, grab the string, and haul hand over hand. So I hauled that string of squid aboard till the boat could hold no more. And then we hitched it in the risings and we rowed for shore. Now, the men were coming from the woods. Well, they heard the women ball. But father said, ah, don't hurry, boys. We've squid enough for all. So, uh, Uncle Jimmy took, he took all until he had enough, and neighbor like he, he handed it on to Skipper Levi Cuff. Well, from stage to stage, that string was passed throughout the whole night long until daylight found it on Eastern Point with Uncle Billy Strong. Now, Uncle Bill, quite thoughtfully, before he went to bed, took two half hitches of the string around the grump on his stage head. Well, the next morning, Hartley's Harbor heard the news, and up they come in a trap skiff with three pair of oars to tow that string down home. And when Hartley's Harbor had enough the following afternoon, that string went on from place to place until it reached Carpoon. Now, uh, what happened to it after that? I don't exactly know, but some folks say that it crossed the straits and ended in Forto. Yes, tall are the tales that fishermen tell when summer's work is done of fish they've caught, birds they've shot, crazy risks they run, but never did a fisherman tell a tale so tall by half a mile, as Grandpa Walcott told that night in the smoke one on the Kyle. Loved that, loved that. So thank you so much, Kelly, for ending our beautiful, beautiful session. So we've, we've started a great relationship now between Lishtol and, and Newfoundland, you're twinned forever. You know, you can't get out of this. And we look forward to the day when we meet, might meet face to face, heart to heart, soul to soul. So now I'm going to stop the recording of